During these Sundays of the Easter season, the church takes us back to the Last Supper to give us a chance to dig deeper into its meaning. Throughout his Last Supper discourse, Christ's constant refrain is, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That commandment is to love one another as I have loved you. The commandment of Christian charity. These are his parting words to his closest disciples. The last flow of love from his sacred heart before it is broken and pierced. They are special words and we need to hear them and to let them sink in. Jesus knows that these 12 men are normal, fallen human beings. They are weak and ignorant, stubborn and headstrong. And yet he also knows that they truly love him. They want to be his disciples. They are just like us, flawed, but committed. He earnestly desires to teach them how to live out their commitment to him. And so he gives them his new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. This is a mark of a Christian, a true follower of Jesus Christ. It's not in pretty words, fancy rituals, and complicated prayers. It's in following the example of Christ who gave his life for us on the cross. To give our lives, leaving behind our comfort zones in order to help our neighbors and build a better world. To be truthful, responsible, honest, and faithful, even when it feels like we are being crucified. That's how we follow Christ. This is the path to loving him and living life to the fullest. It was a path he taught his disciples. It's a path that he teaches us. And it's a path he blazed before us by his passion, death, and resurrection. Years ago, I read a beautiful, touching example of what Christians are supposed to look like. It has always stayed with me. A group of salesmen went to a regional sales convention in Chicago. They had assured their wives that they would be home in plenty of time for Friday night's dinner. In their rush through the airport, one of these salesmen inadvertently kicked over a table which held a display of apples. Apples flew everywhere without stopping or even looking back. They all managed to reach the plane in time. All but one. He told the others, go on without him and went back to where the apples were all over the floor. He was glad he did. The 16-year-old girl, the apple seller, was totally blind. She was softly crying. Tears were running down her cheeks. As she grabbed for her spilled apples, the crowd swirled around her rushing to their flights. The salesman knelt on the floor with her. He gathered up the apples and put them back on the table and helped reorganize her display. He set aside the bruised and the battered apples in a separate basket. When he had finished, he pulled out his wallet and said to the girl, here, Please take this $40 
for the damage that we did. Are you okay? She nodded through her tears. He continued, I hope we didn't spoil your day too badly. As the salesman started to walk away, the bewildered blind girl called out to him, Mister, he turned and looked back. She continued, Are you Jesus? He couldn't get that question out of his head for days. It was such a simple, small-scale event, but it made him see clearly what following Christ was really all about. Love one another as I have loved you. To be a Christian is to be another Christ. Being like Christ is too much for us. He was true man, but he was also true God, something that is beyond our limited reach. If we depend, depend just on our own strength, intelligence, and personality, we will never be able to fulfill the command that Jesus has given us, not all the time, not every day. We will become bitter, frustrated, burned out, angry, and depressed. We were never meant to do it alone. Jesus knows we can't do it alone. That's why he invented the sacrament of confirmation, the sacrament of supernatural strengthening. In the first reading today from the book of Acts, Philip, the deacon, preaches the gospel in Samaria and baptizes a huge number of converts. That's the beginning of their Christian lives. That's their decision to become Christ's followers. But when the news gets back to the apostles in Jerusalem, Peter and John make a special trip out to Samaria in order to call down the Holy Spirit upon them to administer the sacrament of confirmation. That is what Jesus was speaking about when he promised that after he returned to heaven, an event we will commemorate this week on Ascension Thursday, he would send us an advocate to be with us always. The advocate is the Holy Spirit, the third person of the most blessed Trinity who resides in our hearts. This is Christ's greatest gift to us, our own inner source of supernatural light and strength to live out the greatest commandment of Christian charity. That same spirit will make Christ present again in this Mass today. And when we receive Christ in the Eucharist, let's thank the Lord for this great gift. And let's ask for the grace to live by the power of this spirit, just like Christ, loving one another as he has loved us.